Good day, folks. Welcome to the MB Wildman channel. On today's video, we're talking rat traps. And we're talking a real quick mod that I do to these traps. Uh, I don't do them for every situation, but for a lot of times, I want to change the trigger on a rat trap. And I want to change it from a trigger that pushes down uh, to a trigger that pulls. So it's basically putting a push-pull trigger. Um, it's actually not a push-pull. It's a pull-only trigger uh, on a rat trap. So uh, anyway, stick with me here, and I'll show you all about it. Uh, if you haven't yet subscribed to the Wild Man channel, we sure would appreciate it. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Turn on that bell so that you get notified when we upload new content. Wouldn't want you to miss any videos. And as always, you know, we're looking for questions, comments, concerns, whatever you got. Go ahead and share those with us down below. And uh, we'll get back to you as soon as we possibly can on those. Uh, you can follow us on Facebook and Instagram and all those cool social media sites as well if you, uh, if you want to. Uh, also, a new email for those of you who want to drop us a line is uh, nbwildman at gmail.com, okay? So here's, uh, <clears throat> here's my deal with rat traps. Um, I can use rat traps here in New Brunswick for squirrels and weasels mostly, right? And they got to be contained in a box and whatnot. But there's a lot of you who don't have to have them contained in a box. And it allows for a lot of leeway and a lot of different angles and directions that animals can come at your traps from. So the, the basics... These are the two basic kind of Victor rat traps that they have. Um, and this is your, your, just your standard one with the little tiny copper, copper pan, okay? I don't love these for a couple different reasons. Number one, I don't love them because they, the way that they actually hook on the little trigger is so, so fine that the least little bit of movement, um, you know, a mouse, um, sometimes a moth, whatever, uh, will snap these. And also, if you look at the, there's a huge margin for error, right? So you've got all this pan space, like all this, all this trap space here, and they have to hit it just in this one spot. Now, I know that it's designed for rats, and it's designed to have a little piece of bait or peanut butter or whatever on that, and so they're actually working this trigger. And I get it that it works for that, but that's not what we're doing, okay? So I don't love those. <clears throat> the other type that they have are these, these extra wide pan ones. And a lot of trapper guys will tell you that this is what you're supposed to use and that this is what they use, um, et cetera, et cetera. Now, I'm gonna show you a couple of reasons why I don't like these. Uh, the first off is that they're heavy. Now, I don't mean that they're heavy in, you know, like for, you know, someone as you know, rugged and strong as you are, but what I mean is that when you set them, okay, they're heavy and they actually either, you gotta either put them way up like this in order to hold the spring tension. And even at that, it tends to drop a little bit on its own. But if you try to set this like down low so that it's, so that it lays relatively flat, okay? That's right, right there it snaps, okay? So even that, that's just, so right there, right there. So even that, that's sticking up a fair bit, but that won't stay like that. If I move my fingers, that's going to snap because the weight of the pan, the weight of this pan, is too much for that much tension. Okay, so to get this thing to, to work, you got to have it set way up high like this, which I don't like. Uh, the other thing I don't like about them, let's see if I can do this without snapping myself. The other thing I don't like is that although they have a lot less margin for error on the trap, it means that there's a lot of room here for other stuff to snap the trap and still not get caught. You know, a mouse runs across this, he's gonna snap it and not get caught. Um, or you can get snow that blows in the end of your box or snow that, or, you know, uh, anything, a leaf, whatever, it doesn't matter. Uh, there's a lot of area for something to fall on this to snap it, okay? Now, I'm not trying to overcomplicate this, this at all, but what I've done is I've built uh, a trigger system that looks, let me see here, that it looks basically like this, okay? Now, I'll, I, this is not my idea. I saw this on a video. Uh, but I've sort of changed it and given the instructions for how to make this. So this is what it is. And it's just an eye hook, okay, and a piece of wood. Now, if you have a piece of plastic or Teflon, that would be great. But I didn't have a piece handy, so I just used a piece of hardwood. Um, and then you put a nail or a screw up through the bottom. So I'm going to show you the basic concept here. And then, and then the video, uh, if you want to watch... I show you how to actually make one and what the instructions and dimensions are. But so what you do is you pull the pull the copper pan off, just leaving you this staple, right? This big rugged staple that goes through, and then you slide your trigger system. Actually, you know what? I'm going to show you how to build one. So just we're going to cut into the shop real quick, and I'm going to show you how to make the cuts to make one of these. 
Anyway, uh, you want to start with something two inches wide and you want to start with something a half inch thick, okay? Uh, once that's done, so I'm going to set the table saw so that we are three sixteenths uh, is what we're going to cut. So we're going to leave the distance between the blade and the fence at three sixteenths and we're going to move it up. So the distance up here is five eighths, okay? So I'm up five eighths and I'm in three sixteenths and then we're gonna cut a strip right across the top of this piece of hardwood. So that's your first step and what you've just created is the little slot that is going to slide into uh, the trigger mechanism on the trap. Okay. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna make sure that we got the side that's 3 16 thick on this. We're gonna put that down on our table saw. We're gonna set our fence at one inch and we're gonna set the depth of our blade at 5 16 Okay, so all we're gonna do is we're gonna make a slot right in there. So 5 16 thick by one inch. We're just gonna run that right across the top of that there. So that's all you've done. Okay, we've just made that little indent right there. And now our next step with the table saw is we're just gonna cut out this top portion and be gone and then we'll have what we need, okay? Okay, so we're gonna set our blade again at 3 16 to the fence and we're gonna set our blade depth at one inch. We run this through, all we're gonna do is we're gonna run this, this piece off making it our getting rid of this space right here, okay? So what you've just created is this nice long piece of hardwood that is exactly this shape. Uh, we're gonna take this to the saw and we're gonna be able to cut as many strips as the width that we want uh, to make these triggers as you want. Okay, so now that you've seen um, how to do them and how to make them, this is the blank that you have. So you're about, you know, three eighths or a half inch wide here. Just whatever the width of your, whatever the width of the staple is right here, when you wanna leave yourself a little bit of room, but not too, not too bad, okay? So you've got this piece here, right? And obviously, some of you are getting this by now, obviously that this little slot is designed to fit right underneath this staple, like this, okay? And it'll allow movement. Right, so that when this is pulled backwards, it allows the trap to snap, okay? So once you have this, you just wanna drill a couple small holes, okay? So a hole up front for your eye hook and a hole in the back for your bait, your bait holder, okay? And then when you slide this one on like this, okay? And you turn the eye hook down so it's at the level that it's supposed to be, just turn this down so that it fits down in there nice and snug, okay? What you've done is the length of the eye hook, and if you can see that in there, right in there, the eye hook is long enough that it doesn't allow this to come all the way out. So you just create a slide that where it moves back and forth, okay? So you just have a little wiggle room right there. Okay, now you can adjust the position of the eye hook forward or back depending on how much pull that you want, okay? Now you can see the trigger system right if this is all the way forward what you're going to want is you're going to want to clip this trigger back about halfway from in this case it's about halfway from where from where i was or where the original one was so we're going to cut it just like this okay so i've clipped that off and this is what i have so the original was uh let me see if i can show you an original all right, so the original trigger looks like this, okay? And then I've cut my trigger down to look like that, okay? So just a little bit. Now, you might have to tweak these just a little bit depending on where you place the eye hook in the pull trigger, okay? Um, I'm gonna set this and show you kind of the idea, right? So what this does is it allows you to set the trap. It allows you to put the trigger in the eye hook like this, 
and then you put your bait on here, on this little screw or nail. When an animal comes along and they pull on this, they, if they pull it sideways, it might snap, but I don't think so, okay? And then what happens is when they pull it, they pull toward themselves, right? So they're trying to pull the bait off the stick and then that comes out of the eye hook. And what a lot of things, a lot of times it allows for a perfect behind the neck catch, especially for weasels and squirrels, okay? So you put a little piece of meat on here, a little piece of apple on here, whatever it is. When they try to pull it toward themselves, their mouth and their head is right here. So when this bar comes back across, you get a lot of snap right behind the neck catches, just like you're supposed to get for a quick, easy dispatch, right? So let's see if I can do this. Put some gloves on just in case I snap myself, but. Okay, so it should be able to set the trap like this. Let me see if I can change my camera angle. You guys can't see what I'm doing. Okay, let's see if I can just tip this down a bit. You don't need to see me. Okay, so here's the theory. All right, so set the trap. Put this over here. Okay, just like that. So you got your trap set, you got your trigger like this, you've got your bait on the end of the trigger right here. Animal comes along, okay, animal, 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 grabs the bait, pulls it towards themselves, snap out, right? Right behind the net catch, perfect. Okay, and all they had to do was grab this bait hook and just pull it toward them a little bit. Like there's only, only that much play, okay? Now, if you want more play in it, you can certainly get more. Um, it just means you gotta drill your eye hook hole closer to the front, right? And that allows it. Now, as far as setting these go, I mean, they're real easy. You just have to slide the, the trigger in the hole, right? And as soon as you slide the trigger in the hole, it's done. It's not going anywhere. It's, it's completely set on the, in, inside that eye hook, right? Okay, so it's not like they're the weird, you know, ones that are going to snap your hands or whatever, okay? And then again, whatever grabs this, all they have to do is pull it toward them just a tiny, tiniest little bit. Boom, right behind the net catch. So, anyway, listen. Oh, let me move this again. Ah. Anyway, so look, I hope this is something that you can use out in your line and something that you find, you know, maybe useful in some certain situations. I know a lot of guys that use um, weasel boxes where the whole front is open, so animals can't approach from the side or whatnot. And these are perfect for that because they come in from the front. They don't have to go through a hole and then drop down on a pan like they do here in New Brunswick. Um, but if you've got this set and this is an opening that you can leave open, like a little door, they reach in here, they grab this and pull it toward them, boom. Got them every time, right? So anyway, this is a pull trigger for a uh, Victor rat trap. And I hope this is something you can use out on your line. Until next time, happy hunting from the MB Wildman channel.